We are joined now by Austin Price of VolQuest. And in continuing with the theme of the week of the dawn of a new era with a much ballyhooed five-star quarterback taking over. The one everybody's waiting for. Nico time in Tennessee. Yeah, I mean, everybody's excited, Andy. I mean, it, it's changed this the uh, landscape of this bowl game dramatically. Um, not to say that you know people weren't going to be excited to watch Tennessee play one more football game, but it just adds a level of excitement, especially when they're playing Iowa, which plays such a kind of boring, mundane brand of football. Now you kind of have this uh, excitement. You got Nico, you got Cam Seldon, two true freshmen, both in the backfield, one at quarterback, one at running back, and you know Nico. Uh, provides a lot of kind of a jolt to the arm for uh, Tennessee fans. I had multiple Tennessee fans text me as they kind of, as the word started to leak out, you know, right around Christmas and then into to Wednesday and, and said, Hey, I'm going to be in Vero beach with my family. I'm coming over now. We're getting tickets. We weren't going to come. We're now coming. And I think, you know, I'm not saying there's going to be 15,000 extra Tennessee fans, but I do think you'll have a trickle down effect of there'll be a little more orange there than was going to be there uh, because of Nico starting. Well, and, and that's the thing. I, I People might wonder why we're making a big deal about this. Avery Johnson's a huge deal at Kansas State. Jackson sure. Arnold's a huge deal at Oklahoma. But this is an even bigger deal. I, I'm trying to remember because I remember I came up a couple years ago during the height of Nico's recruitment, and, and he was playing in a seven-on-seven seven tournament in Knoxville, and you and I stood out there in the snow and watched him play. And I just – I the last recruit, quarterback recruit going to an SEC school that I remember getting this much hype generating this much excitement was Tim Tebow at Florida but the difference for Tim Tebow was he had a role right off the bat as a true freshman there wasn't this wait for to see what he could do Tennessee fans have been waiting for this for almost two years now yeah, exactly. It was about 25 months ago he took his first visit to Knoxville. It was for the Vanderbilt game in 21. And, uh, you know, Tennessee became a player then. Then he comes back out in March. He commits shortly thereafter. Um, in fact, that next week, I was out in California. Just happened to be out there with my family. I go to a – his dad invites me to a throwing session where he tells me, hey, Nico's going to come in next week. So we taped a, uh, we pre-taped his commitment interview, and uh, the rest is history. And, and, and you know, so Nico has, uh, you know, kind of been building with Tennessee fans for the last couple of years. You hit the nail on the head, and now – and, you know, he finally gets to the field full time uh, coming up on Monday. And if you look at kind of his season in review up to this point, he's gotten better in every outing. Like, you know, he, he was more efficient against Vanderbilt than he was against UConn and more efficient against UConn than he was back in September in those early uh, outings. So, you know, Tennessee fans are excited. I think Nico's excited. And to be honest with you, I've talked to multiple players on this team and they're excited. And that's not to poop on Joe because they appreciated Joe a lot. But I think this was a lame duck game, so to speak, and now it's not. You can build towards the future. Several of those offensive linemen are coming back for next year. That's big for Nico, including Cooper Mays, who will play in this game. Um, you know, we'll, we'll wait to see what Brew McCoy does. He was in, you know, played an integral part in Tennessee getting two lane transfer Chris Brazel. So you know, Nico mm -hmm. is uh, you know his fingerprints are starting to become all over Tennessee football, and it'll really be that way come Monday. Well, and there's so much excitement, but there's also so much pressure because he hasn't been a starter yet. We haven't seen this yet. And, oh, by the way, it's Iowa's defense, which makes all quarterbacks look kind of bad. Yeah, I mean, again, the overreactions to Monday will be, will be, will be drastic. If he plays well, the Heisman campaign is going to be in full, full effect for next year. Yep. If he plays poorly, everybody's going to go, I mean, we, we give him the big NIL money and, and, and that for that. Are you kidding me? I think no matter what happens, good or bad, I think you have to understand Peyton Manning took the field against the Washington State team in 1994. I'm not saying that this kid's going to be Peyton Manning. I'm just saying that the the level of interest in Peyton and the level of interest in Nico is similar. Peyton completed seven passes for 79 yards and a 10-9 win over the Cougars. Both teams, Iowa and Washington State, were really good on defense. So I, I think the biggest thing is play efficient, play well, play mistake-free, and uh, – the, the other thing is when the kid makes a good play, it doesn't mean he actually made a good play. He could actually bust it on that play, and it just worked out. And when he makes a bad throw, it may not even be on him making the bad throw. The receiver may run the, th wrong, the wrong route. So you just kind of let it play out and enjoy, uh, enjoy Monday. I mean, if you're a Tennessee fan, because they've been clamoring for this. They've been begging for it. They've got it. You've got Nico. It's kind of like when he committed. You chanted my name. You asked for me. You got me. Enjoy it.
<laughs> well, so I guess that makes Joe Milton the Brandon Stewart of this situation. Is who's the Todd Helton here? Is there is there a future Gaston Major League Moore. Baseball star just sitting there? <laughs> yeah. Gas Gaston Moore will Gaston Moore will have will be the backup for his second straight bowl game. He will be the number two if something happened to the starter. Last year it would have been Joe. This year it's Nico. It will be Gaston Moore, who is a walk on quarterback, was with hype at UCF, and now he rolls in here and you know. We asked Heupel about that on uh, Wednesday, and he said, you know, Gaston has a full uh, command of the offense. If, if we had to turn to him, we'd be okay, and, you know, we'd, we'd have faith in him. So, I mean, he's supposed to say that, but at the same time, I think the staff likes Gaston enough. They've, they've got him to come back for next year, and he'll be Nico's backup a year from now with Jake Merklinger, the four-star from Savannah, being number three at this point. And Joe Milton will be around helping with meetings as they get toward the game. It, it sounds more like a almost a passing of the torch situation. That's what it is. It's absolutely a passing of the torch situation. He, he's he been around all through bowl practice in Knoxville. He came home for Christmas here to the Orlando area, made the drive over to the team hotel. He's been involved in meetings all on Tuesday night, Wednesday. He'll be a part of practice all week long, but he will not suit up or play in this football game. And for Joe, it's a chance to uh, turn the page to the senior bowl. He got an invite to that a few weeks back and, and start to prepare and then, you know, prepare for the NFL draft and, and, and the combine because Joe, if we know anything about him, he's going to show well in that type of an event. He's got that mm -hmm. ridiculous arm. He runs really well once he gets a full head of steam. And I just think he's going to test out the yin yang at this thing and, and, and be somebody that, you know, some team goes, I just, I just see us, you know, taking a chance and, 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 and molding him into what he can be. That's what Josh Heupel and them did. People thought Josh Heupel and them were, were crazy for taking him when he went to, when he, when he came from Michigan and, you know, since he was able to get, you know, eight wins out of Joe Milton this year and, and, you know, they wish they could have that Florida game back, but they can't. And, you know, we'll kind of see where Joe goes as a pro. Well, Jim Nagy from the Senior Bowl told us on the show, he said that the NFL people want to see Joe Milton because they want to see him throw at last year's pro day when, 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 yeah. when Hendon couldn't. They begged for Joe to throw to Jalen Hyatt and Cedric Tillman and, Tennessee didn't let that happen. They brought in the young man, uh, Dresser Wynn, from UT Martin, uh, who won a single-A state title out there from my buddy Derek Rang at uh, Dresden. And um, you know, he's now – he actually suited up for the Rams not too long ago. And Dresser's wow. a good, solid quarterback. But they brought him in because Heupel knew – if Joe threw at the, at, <laughs> at, at, at the, at the uh, at the pro day, it was going to be all about Joe instead of all about Jalen Hyatt, Cedric Tillman, you know, Byron Young and all those players, Darnell Wright, that, that you know, kind of went through it. So he did not want to put that pressure on Joe, and uh, he knew Joe would have that moment this, uh, this March, and he will, and he'll, th he'll perform well at the Combine and at Pro Day, in my opinion. So what's Joe's legacy going to be at Tennessee? Because uh, he, he came in, obviously nobody's upset that, that Hendon Hooker took over the starting job and, and was as good as he was, but Joe's year as the starter, how, how are people going to look back on that? I think they're going to see Joe as a good teammate. I think they're going to see him a guy, as a guy who is extremely talented. Um, you know, missed on a few things. Um, you know, but uh, someone who, you know, loved Tennessee, put Tennessee first, and uh, I think they'll they'll look back on him fondly. Nobody, nobody is upset um, with Joe Milton at Tennessee, like fan from a fan's perspective. Yeah, I think two years ago when he had all the overthrows, as actually three seasons ago now um, against Pittsburgh. People were frustrated. I think when he ran out of bounds at the end of the game against Ole Miss instead of throw, throwing it to the end zone, um, people were frustrated. But I think on the whole, man, they really appreciated what Joe did. Joe was a, was a consummate pro. He was a teammate um, through and through. And, uh, you know, in the day and age where people look to leave and look to bolt and stuff like that, he just put his head down and kind of went to work and, and got better under Josh Heupel and uh, Joey Halsley and uh, Mitch Militello. And, um, again, I think, you know, when people look back, you know, several years from now, yeah, I think they'll probably realize Tennessee could have won a few more games with Joe. But I think at the same time that, you know, Joe did everything he could for Tennessee with a big smile on his face and, uh, you know, you know, did everything the right way. It's crazy when you think about going back to 2021, the dynamic of Joe and Hendon and how all of that worked out. I don't know that yeah. you're going to see that again in this era of college football. You're not. I mean, look at now. I mean, you know, you, you have so many kids that, uh, again, if they get uh, a hangnail, they go on the portal. If their girlfriend breaks up with them, they go on the portal. If the dog eat the homework, they go on the portal. And, you know, 
did those two kids kind of hung in there when Joe was named the, the starter? Hendon didn't pout and complain. He kind of just went to do his thing and continued to put his head down and go to work. When Joe got hurt and Hendon came in and ran with the job and Joe couldn't get it back, he put his head down and went to work and was a good teammate for Hendon. So, you know, absolutely, um, you know, it's a, it's a rarity when you see two guys like that, you know, get along, live together, um, you know, and, and really bond. Well, let's talk Nico. You know, he's played mop-up duty so far this season, but what can people expect who, you know, who don't follow recruiting, who aren't Tennessee fans? They're going to be like, what, what is the big deal about this guy? What is it about him that has Tennessee fans so excited? He just has a presence about him. I mean, like he is a, he's a, he's a cool customer and uh, he's got a quick release. Um, got a really strong arm. Now it's not Joe strong, but I mean, whose is right. right. Um, but really strong arm, quick release can throw really well on the run. And I think the biggest thing about Nico is I, I I'd be surprised if on Monday he didn't create a few things when things aren't there and when things break down. And, uh, you know, I think that that's what you can kind of count on from uh, number eight on Monday. And again, I think uh, he's going to make some mistakes. There's, you know, Iowa's defense is probably going to bait him a few times into making some bad throws, but he, I think he's going to make enough plays as well. Tennessee's got a lot of youth in this game on both sides of the ball, tailback, wide receiver, cornerback. And uh, I'm betting a few of these young kids, you know, they, again, they may bust and may give up a play or, 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 or make a turnover on offense. But I think they're going to make a play or two as well. And I think that that's good for Josh Heupel because this staff has been a little slow to just throw a kid out there. And I think that, you know, the more you see them have success, the more likelihood is, um, you know, the, 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 you know, the greater likelihood is you see them have success in throwing kids out there sooner rather than later. Well, you mentioned a really important name that's not a younger person, it's a much older person, Cooper Mays. You know, how much about having the, the line they want to have intact helps those young guys? I think it helps uh, immensely, you know, especially when you have such a young backfield when Selden's in there. I mean, it's true freshman and true freshman, but it's behind – a senior in Gerald Mincy, a senior in Cooper Mays, a senior in Ollie Lane, uh, at, at senior in Jeremiah Crawford, because I don't think uh, you know, you know can't, John Campbell's going to play in this football game, and then Jackson Lampley at right guard. So you know, you've got a veteran offensive line out there. Cooper obviously makes things go at the center spot. He's back healthy again, and uh, which will allow Ollie to play guard. And uh, you know, I think that helps this team. Again, I think winning on early downs, Brent Hubbs said this, winning on early downs is going to be pivotal for Tennessee's offense to help Nico um, yeah. to play at first and five, or, or sorry, second and five and third and three instead of second and 10 and third and eight. So yeah. I, I think winning early downs will be pivotal in this, in this football game. And it all starts up front with an offensive line that's, you know, you know got a lot of experience and they played a lot of football in the SEC. Third and predictable is about the last thing you want to be for, with Phil, Phil Parker calling the defense on the other side. The the other thing you mentioned, you, you were talking about the fans and uh, you know Nico getting a big NIL deal. And he his was really the first big deal of the NIL era, and and we made a huge deal out of it. You know, in, in my old place of employment, we wrote tons of stories about it. And I remember when we were there that in, in the spring, you and I standing in the snow there. Being around him and his family, you, you kind of got the sense like if somebody can handle this, he probably can. Because I think there's a lot of people like I go back to, to me at 18 years old. There's no way I could have handled that situation. He seems like the kind of guy like that Pied Piper kind of guy who just relishes this sort of thing. He does. I, I you know I don't think he even thinks about the NIL side. I think that a lot of that that is stuff handled by people around him. I don't think he thinks about those type of things. And he was in Knoxville so much, you know, uh, for visits, and people just gravitated towards him. Like they would see him out in, in Market Square or on, on Gay Street or wherever, and they just gravitate towards him. And all of a sudden he's taking pictures with all these little kids, and they've lined up around the corner. It's like the episode in the, in the movie The Santa Claus when they're walking <laughs> through the park and all these kids start just sitting on Tim Allen's lap. I mean, like, like it's, it's, you know, people just gravitate towards him. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, he can handle it. I don't think he really thinks about that type of stuff. And uh, you talk about the pressure, it's on him. But uh, I don't think he really feels it, realizes it. I think he just kind of is Nico. And, uh, you know, I, I think that that's probably one of his more and, uh, uh, endearing qualities. 
Well, I, I can't wait to see it. And we're all going to get to watch Nico Mania begin on Monday. Thank you, Austin. Appreciate it, Andy. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On3Sports YouTube channel.